football. And um, to make matters worse, guys, there's some phenomenal people that have come from around the world and they've been grandfathered into a country like Australia, whether it's South, whether it, whether it's Eastern European states or South Africa, Zimbabwe, Middle Eastern states. We've been grandfathered in. We sp- we, I don't speak, I basically don't speak any Arabic. I've never been to the place except maybe a week, Lebanon and, and um, maybe Egypt. But then you get these people that come here and they're messing it up. They're, they're messing it up. It's like, and the most angry people... I know, I know. If you're immigrants, you you've got a bit of imposter syndrome, and you've just you don't want to rock the boat, and Labor let you in, and you know you're just try, you're just you're just stoked you can keep a job, but you've actually got to talk on this. Australia, mm. pe- people are shocked when I when I tell them this. Australia is thirty um, percent immigrants, and fifty two percent are either immigrants or the children of immigrants. Fifty two percent. It's one of the highest in the world for an old democracy like Australia. And if you don't start speaking up on these topics then we're going to have a situation where they ruin it. They ruin it. This this enormous gem we have here called Australia, where we can raise our kids and we can have economic uh, sovereignty and the government, most of all, you know, m- for the most part of our history stays out of our lives, which we're slowly losing now, as we saw in the COVID years. If you don't speak up, we will lose it. It will become like the crap holes we came from. It'll become like that. That's where it's going. And if we don't actually do, if we don't, politicians are like gloves. They're like gloves, okay? They will either be filled with their own values if they're of conviction, or they will be filled with the values of special interests, of their community, of organizations that lobby them. And you can you can actually force them to do, if they don't have their own values, if they're not, you know, your values or whatever, you can actually lobby them if you're a constituent. That's what these lovely people on my left have done in their community of Cessnock. That's what they're continuing to do. That's why they almost won the mayorship. That's why they come second in federal elections. This is this is exactly in state elections, rather. This is so Quinton's like, oh, I wish we was a federal. <laughs> but you know what, Stuart Bonds, you guys got behind Stuart Bonds in the federal election for the Thank hunter, you. and that's why you guys have a seventy percent no vote in your area. Yep. And and that's that's what this well, is about. I'd like to point out one of the hypocrisies of that whole situation, right? So on one side, on the left, Greens and Labor, um, you've got some of the more extreme people jumping up and down saying, you know, like, um, we need reparations for Aboriginal people because of the colonization and, you know, you're taking our land basically. But then these same people is okay with importing 750,000 migrants in one year. Mm. So is that not colonization? It's an invasion. You know what I mean? It's an it's, invasion. It's the same thing. Yeah. I think it was Nigel Farage. He said, what's happening in the UK is D-Day in reverse <laughs> and slowly. Yeah. And, and that's, and this is the thing. They're not monitoring the people that are coming in. It's in mass and we're not getting doctors and nurses. That's no, not and that's it. Going, we we know? need houses built. We need tradespeople out there in my industry. I work in the coal industry. We need people with certain skills, right? Mm. We need farmers. Um, but I don't think it, it it's not on the the list of the immigrants that we're getting in that hey, we need these positions filled. How about we look at, you know, getting some of those people with those skills? Mm and bring them here but we're getting people you know to do bloody waiter jobs it's it's ridiculous i got so much to say on this and maybe it, 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 anyway. warrant, it warrants another podcast but um when my dad came here he built the churches that he was buried that he, he, he had the funeral services in he built many churches around the country he was in the construction industry he literally helped build the country um if we're taking if we're bringing in people that are just takers if we're not, if we're saying no to people like the ones I met in South Africa, lawyers, you know, maybe we've got too many lawyers, but lawyers and people with money and, and entrep- entrepreneurs and business owners who I did speak to there that can't even get into Australia. But I've, I've met the people that come here and, and it's like, what do you have to offer? You've actually got to buy in to our values. You've got to have a skill set. And instead, what we're getting is is ridiculous. Like on my team, on this particular team for the podcast that bring it together, we've got myself, a, an Aussie first and so- foremost of Lebanese and Syrian ethnicity. Video editor is French Lebanese. Our switcher guy is a Syrian. Our um, our one of our one of our comms guys and managers Italian. 
Um, another guy uh, works with us. He's Greek. Uh, and, uh, our cartoon guy, he's Italian. We're all Aussie, but we come from other countries and we're here fighting for this absolute gem of a thing. Um, I'm going to stop talking there, but did you guys have any thoughts on that little spiel? <laughs> Well, I mean, I liked it a lot. I'm half Slavic, uh, half uh, Anglo myself. Mm. Uh, my grandparents on my father's side basically fled um, communism, mm. came here in 1948. Australia is in a much better position than England is at the moment because we've got a little bit of, um, well, we've got a lot of uh, water around us and it's a much harder place to get to than England is. Um, th this problem in England has building, been building up for decades. Um, I'm remind, and, and one of the big problems in England is, as sort of Ben suggested, that there, is been, there has been a failure of policing in England. And what, you see, what, you, what, what seems to happen is that uh, when, uh, say, um, Muslim protesters about Israel or, or something like that hit the streets and start causing damage, start getting violent, the police just turn and run. Uh, but when you have people protesting immigration in the street, they're the ones that the police will either arrest in the street or they'll, you'll find they come to your house and arrest you in your house for alleged hate speech. And the Brits are basically fed up with it. Uh, they remember the Rotherham grooming gangs mm. from the late 90s throughout the 2000s where literally thousands of girls were raped and the police knew about it and turned a blind eye. Why? Because they didn't want to be accused of racism because it just has to be said the rapists were immigrant gangs. Mm. And Pakistani Muslim gangs. That's right. And of course, Tommy Robinson drew attention to this. So what did they do to Tommy Robinson? They arrested him. They threw him in jail. He's just been arrested again. I'm, I, can, I think we can see that the Brits are at a point now where they've said, we have tried everything. We have approached the politicians. We've approached local councils. We've protested. Nothing seems to be working. Today, there was a big clash between the police and and protesters it's hard to see this not escalating into just a massive conflict in england um, i don't think it's necessarily going to resolve what's going on but what we as australians need to do is to have a much more responsible immigration policy which we currently don't have and let me just say the best friend of immigrants is a responsible restrictive immigration policy and the worst enemy of immigrants is a very relaxed bad immigration policy because when you get immigration wrong that is when you get the wrong people in in the wrong quantities over the wrong period of time the people who get the blame are always all immigrants as a whole, including the really good ones. Mm. So immigrants should be at the front of saying, we want a strict immigration policy. It is in their interests. Absolutely. And Ben, I want to, show, I want to throw it to you. But firstly, you did um, 